Hello everyone and <laughs> This is Europe and here's Sweden. Now let's go, shall we? Amidst the inviting meltings of the Ice Age, human beings trod into the terrain we know as Sweden. And a very nice looking terrain it was, filled with forests and lakes and <laughs> Over time, the peoples of the Swedish lands, like those of Denmark and Norway, began speaking Germanic languages, which they still do. And while the Romans never made it to Sweden, they knew about the Swedes, and the historian Tacitus mentions them in his book Germania. Neighboring tribes included the Geats and Goots and Goats, well, not the Goats, who ended up fusing with the Swedes to form a single kingdom, though when and how this occurred is unknown. They also made cool stuff, like this helmet with eyebrows. Skipping on to the 8th century, the Viking Age arose, when the Northmen embarked on long, epic voyages of looting, massacre, conquest, and exploration. But while the Danes and Norwegians focused on westward seaborne journeys, the Swedes mostly followed waterways overland into Eastern Europe. Even so, Swedish warriors took part in the Western raids too. Now, the Swedes proved such impressive fighters that the Byzantine emperors recruited them as elite military units and their own personal bodyguards, known as the Varangian Guard. There were also a group of Swedes from Råslagen, called the Rus, who came came to rule over the Eastern Slavs and founded the powerful state of Kievan Rus, from which Russia derives its name. That's right, Russia is named after a bunch of Swedes. Meanwhile, back home, Eric the Victorious got his name after winning this battle. His son, Olaf Hurt Konung, teamed up with Denmark to attack the Norwegians and partition Norway among themselves. Olaf was the first Swedish king to accept Christianity, a faith that spread further during the long reign of his son. Swedes also began colonizing portions of neighboring Finland. This map of Scandinavia in the 12 and 1300s shows how things were looking back then. Around 1250, the future capital Stockholm was founded by an angry-faced nobleman. Hey, you'd be upset too with a hairstyle like that. Anyway, under Magnus IV, Sweden and Norway entered into a union that lasted for much of his reign, in which time the Black Death entered and devastated Sweden, wiping out an enormous percentage of the population. Magnus was overthrown by Albert here, who himself ended up toppled and was followed by Margaret I of Denmark. Margaret instituted the Kalmar Union in 1397, in which Denmark, Sweden, and Norway were joined together under a single monarch. The Union, designed to challenge the might of the German economic powerhouse known as the Hanseatic League, was not very popular among the people of Sweden, and there was a rebellion in the 1430s. It failed, but the Union was doomed. There was just too much resentment against Danish supremacy. The Danes responded rather unwisely to this by executing many anti-Union Swedes. The son of one of the murdered men, Gustav Vasa, led a rebellion against Denmark in which the Swedes were victorious, and Gustav Vasa became the king of Sweden. He was a reformer who embraced the Protestant Reformation, for much the same reason as Henry VIII did in England, to not have to answer to the Pope in Rome. His successor was an expansionist, and not just where facial hair was concerned, eager to extend Sweden's domains. He joined the Poles in the Livonian War against Russia, and managed to acquire a bit of land, and then he went insane and was replaced by his half-brother with his even grander beard. In this time, Denmark attempted to force Sweden back into union with it, and Sweden was like, yeah, nah, and many died and they didn't join and everyone was worse off for the conflict. And speaking of conflict, there was plenty of that, which is a matter of course for anyone seeking to start an empire, which is what Sweden did. The man who launched Sweden into imperial spheres was Gustavus Adolphus, a highly capable commander whose militaristic innovations have led some to label him the first modern general. He championed the Protestant cause in the Thirty Years' War and won a resounding victory at the Battle of Breitenfeld. In a battle the following year, however, which the Swedes ended up winning, Gustavus was shot dead. He was succeeded by his daughter, Christina, who was as fond of books and knowledge as she was of hunting and wearing men's clothes. Having no desire to marry, she abdicated and was followed by her cousin, Charles X, who led Sweden to victory against both Russia and Denmark in the Second Northern War, during which the Swedes rampaged through Poland and caused immense destruction in a campaign called the Deluge. Charles XI inherited the Swedish Empire at its height, and after yet another war, oversaw a time of peace. Sweden's enemies, including Russia, arose to attack it in the Great Northern War. Sweden was led by Charles XII, an extraordinary leader, who in the Battle of Narva in 1700, led his men to victory over a Russian force three times the size of his own.
his own. But then, some years later, he made a mistake. A mistake Napoleon and Hitler would also make. He invaded Russia. Bad idea, catastrophe, thousands dead, Russia rises, Sweden declines. Empire, over. Parliament thereafter did most of the governing until the monarchy's final absolutist roar arrived with Gustav III, who invested himself with immense powers and reigned as an enlightened despot until he was assassinated in 1792 at a masked ball. Meanwhile, Sweden had experienced a flourishing of science and culture. This rendition of the periodic table shows how many elements were discovered by Swedish scientists. 18. Tied with Germany and second only to Britain. But Sweden had developed an unhealthy obsession with fighting Russia, and there was more war and Sweden lost Finland to Russia. Then a French guy became king of Sweden, and Norway too, after Sweden took over Norway via a short war that would prove to be the last Sweden would ever fight, thereafter preferring neutrality. Meanwhile, as the 19th century stomped on, Sweden's population grew, and many emigrated to America, and industrialization slowly stamped its mark upon the nation. Norway broke away peacefully in 1905, and Sweden developed its renowned social welfare system, and remained neutral during both world wars and the Cold War. In 1995, Sweden joined the EU, a big bridge was built linking Sweden to Denmark, and the number of non-Swedes began to balloon, with a large spike occurring during the 2015 migrant crisis. Following the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine, Sweden did something it avoided for many years, applied for membership in NATO. Anyway, today Sweden is one of the richest nations in the world, with a very high level of human development and high quality of life, and has also managed to produce excellence and noteworthiness in multiple fields, ranging from cinema and science to music and literature. So that's it for Sweden, and that's all from me for now. Bye-bye!